back in times past, before the crash and the crisis and a global recession, we used to do full length episodes of Shut Up and Sit Down, up to two hours long. Paul, I don't think you're remembering this right. Packed with special guests and. It was basically all sorts the result of, of two people being semi employed. Yeah, special features and then life and marriage and children got in the way. Okay, and I don't like, have any children and yours got quite, taken not away. quite the same as what they used to be, and we ask ourselves can we still do can we episodes do it? with more than one review? Can and we? We're going to review six games in this six. video or die trying. Because we're in training for something special, viewers. Something special is coming up. In the meantime, yeah, we'll look at this stack of six games and a sort of an expansion. So, what's and first? In 12 minutes ish. Whoa! D Day Dice is a game about dice and about D Day. And if you want to kickstart the liberation of Europe all by yourself, you can do that, or you can rope in another friend or just any old player, just any person who you want to play it with. And then you'll be both charging up the beaches on D Day under enemy fire and crawling under wire and climbing over minefields and everything. The reason you can do that is the enemy is the game itself, it's not actually anyone else that you're playing the game with. Let me explain, let me show you what happens. This is a map in D-Day Dice, and you'll gradually be advancing your way up it like a kind of a ladder of death, like the deadliest game of Donkey Kong you've ever played, because you play the game by rolling dice, and the dice give you stuff, and you've got this lovely little cheat sheet that tells you exactly what the different rolls of red, white, and blue, the colours of freedom, what those rolls give you. Those give you troops or braver equipment of all sorts, and you have a lovely little cardboard ticker. Here's the British one, do or die, and that records how many men you have. And the thing is, as you advance up this ladder, you're constantly losing men, or you're losing bravery, and you're trying to get these numbers higher and higher by rolling dice, and you can re-roll the dice if you want, but you're just pushing your lot, you're pushing your lot, because some of the dice lock. You only get so many re-rolls, but the clever thing about D-Day Dice isn't just playing dice and numbers, it's that it's a game full of stuff, it's full of random stuff. Let me show you all the stuff. The stuff is like equipment that you buy with the, the stats that you stock up on, or awards that appear that allow new things to happen in the game, or troops who you recruit who do special things, give you certain powers, and really this is what the game is. D-Day Dice at this core. It's fairly simple, it's not that complex a game, but it has so much stuff, so many possibilities that you throw in together. And the really cool thing is, if you do actually play with someone else, you get a really good shared experience of trying to cooperate and share things with each other and give things to people, and it kind of works like this. Ah, oh, I rolled some extra soldiers Thanks, for you. second player. My name's Quinn. There's also an expansion called The Atlantic Wall. The Atlantic Wall actually allows another player to play as the Germans, so all the bit I said about it sort of being like against the game is just, it's wrong, because now this is like there's another player and you're against them. So, so I should show that to you, shouldn't I? So much sugar. Anyway, D-Day Dice is pretty good. It's a pretty cool game to start off with. If you're particularly a fan of solo play or you like cooperating against the game, it's one we'd recommend. That was more than two minutes, wasn't it? So Bang, which comes in this Dinosaur Enema Special Edition, is a game of hidden roles for a huge number of players, up to ten, in which one of you is the sheriff and sequestered around the table like so many cat house venereal diseases, are some animals who want to kill him and deputies who want to save him, and a renegade player who's basically a balancing mechanic and is kind of doomed. And you'll shoot each other and you'll throw dynamite and you'll hide behind horses and in caves, it's a lot of fun. Samurai Sword, from the same Italian designer, is essentially the new version of Bang that tries to smooth over Bang's two biggest problems. One, if you're shot and killed, you're out of the game and that sucks. Second of all is that the Renegade doesn't have a snowball's chance in a town that really hates snowballs and shoots them dead. So we've got a Japanese theme now and there are shoguns and there are ninjas instead of outlaws and a ronin who gets his points tripled. So he's now in a chance of winning and very, very scary for everybody. Uh, and samurai who want to save the shogun. But, oh, and of course, rather than having player elimination, players are hitting each other and taking honor points, which are the game's currency. So it turns out, though, that in paving over Bang's two biggest problems, they've made this game as perfectly smooth and boring as an egg. Turns out the player elimination is what made Bang exciting and tense and infuriating. Turns out the renegade not having a chance was what made it funnier. And this game is now, as a smooth egg, not enormously exciting. When was the last time you got excited by an egg? Well, they have they have those like those love egg things. What? They're sort of it's it's like a sex thing, and you put it up your um, up your bum. Yeah. Are you saying they should put this up their bum? I think so.
Ah, Shadow Hunters, right. So, this is another game of Hidden Rolls from Japan, which is the spiritual and literal home of, uh, of Hidden Rolls. For four to eight players, like Bang, so it might be tricky to get to your table, or it might be exactly what you need. But, you know what? While I was complaining about Samurai Sword being too elegant to be fun, uh, Shadow Hunters is the most insane, cracked, unbalanced thing since our current Prime Minister. Ah, politics. Political joke. Political joke. Given them both barrels. Who's the Prime Minister? I think it's the Queen. Okay, so a table of Shadow Hunters' players is, is divided into two teams, but nobody knows who anyone is, whether they're a Shadow or one of the Hunters trying to kill the Shadows, or even an innocent bystander, with a private objective that might be as bonkers as trying to die first. On your turn, you're going to be bouncing around the game's six locations with names like Erstwhile Altar and Weird Woods. Wherever you are, you'll gain a special power, which might be an item, which could be anything from angelic intervention to a chocolate bar or a huge knife. You'll also have the opportunity to maybe ask or accuse other players of being something. Most importantly, you'll be able to attack anyone who's on the location that you are. The way damage is dealt with in Shadow Hunters is also kind of weird and interesting. As players take damage, they'll creep up this chart, and these markings are where the different characters die. So you might just be casually attacking someone, you'll push them up and, oh, they rally, they were on your team and they're dead. Or you might be pushing up someone further and further and further and further and die already! It's great fun! But basically, Shadow Hunters is a game where you have no idea what's going on, no idea who anyone is. You're constantly made to feel like a prick, and I can't recommend it highly enough. <laughs> Ingenious is a family kind of game, the kind of game that's supposed to get people to come around the table to play with each other, maybe? I, that doesn't really sound like a good just not making any sense. Anyway, what I mean is it's the kind of game that you see in a common or garden store next to Monopoly and Cluedo and Connect. So why are we reviewing it then? I don't really know. I suppose it's a Rainer Knizia game and he makes kind of mathsy games and he can't be stopped. I mean, we've tried. It's a game of tactical play. It's a game of laying down hexes and hexes hexagons and you try and lay them down in next to other hexagons and they're all tiles so you're putting tiles next to other tiles to make rows of tiles because you score points based on rows of tiles connecting other tiles and it's about how many tiles you put down so it's a bit like doing your bathroom or something I suppose and it's there's sort of vague uh, I suppose thoughtfulish things because you're trying to block other people off from putting their tiles down uh, in a way that's kind of like playing Scrabble but it doesn't matter what any of the letters are basically Ingenious is actually right. It's fine. It's all right. We had a better time than we thought we would have with it, and there's actually an amount of thought that goes into playing, even though it's quite basic. And I think what I'm saying is, if you're just left in a nuclear bunker and everything's been destroyed and it's the end of the world and you can't go outdoors and there's one other person you have one game and that one game is ingenious, you would last about a day and a half before your shaking, shivering hands bring the pistols to your temples. Have it's won so many awards. Not last and not least is a game called Goblins Inc, which is a game about, I guess, putting stuff down on other stuff, and that is becoming the theme of the. Maybe that's all games. I don't know, really. The Red Bull is wearing off. The important thing is that Goblins Inc is a game for two players where you assemble rickety battle robots from little pieces like this, weapons and patching on armor and, and different tools, and then you send them out to fight each other, trying to outwit your opponent by building a better robot. But, 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 that's only half of it because you can play as two players and you can pummel each other, or you can play as four, which is fantastically good fun because you have two teams of two and you're like two crappy versions of the A-team assembling your crappy little vehicles sending them out to fight and then arguing with your teammate about the instructions that you give the thing like does it rotate or does it shoot in this direction it's chaos and it reminds us of another game so it's time for a cutaway now way way back in like ancient history probably before you were born in our first season we reviewed a game called galaxy truck it's also by czech games it's got a similar kind of theme and some mechanics and we love it we've talked about it loads since because we find it witty, we find it accessible, we find it replayable and, and good for new players and, and varied and silly and, and Goblins Inc, well, it's, look at it, it's a similar kind of thing. It's got a lot of the same elements in there. It's maybe a little area, it's a bit less complex, which makes it a quicker play, which makes it a quicker play, but it's still enjoyable, it's got that same sense of chaos, what, what? What do you want? Has Brendan fallen down a well? What Pro is it? Probably, maybe. I hope so. I just... Uh, what? Well, it's 
It's it's not as it's not as clever as Galaxy Tracker. It's it's not maybe as as as, as fun. There's not as much stuff going on. But one that should still play it. and the team thing. Is no, because cool. you can teach Galaxy Tracker as it's going, and Galaxy Tracker has a cool team mode as well. So that's not that helpful, really. Yeah. Well, you know what else isn't helpful? The sugar's right now. What a game. What a game. Betrayal, the house on the hill, is a game and it literally exists. That's great, that's great. Good one. And we haven't reviewed it for ages because it's just so weird and we don't still know what we feel like. So essentially the game opens and you all control a little horror movie trope exploring a creepy mansion like the little girl or the jock and you have these cool character cards showing your stats and they slide up and down. Then basically what happens is you play the opening of the game and you have no fun and after about 15 minutes you explore the house and the board will look like this. So what players are doing as they explore the ground floor and the upper floor and the basement is they're searching through items and events and omens, these beautiful decks of non-standard cards, and they're also searching for a board game of some kind which really isn't here. And, uh, and eventually though, you'll collect enough omens that you'll get to roll enough of these totally the most dickheaded dice in all of board gaming that you'll get enough of a number that the haunt will begin. And this is where uh, Betrayal of the House on the Hill starts acting kind of like an absentee father who's gone for ages and then suddenly shows up and tries to buy your affection with the most stunning display of generosity I might have ever seen in a board game. What happens is that one of you, depending on the layout of the house and the items and events and omens you found, will be declared the traitor, the bad guy, and suddenly this is a co-op game with everyone versus them. And you'll look through the traitor's tome to create any one of 50 different horror movies that it turns out you've been playing all along with different objectives, different ideas, different stories, different wind conditions, different little flavor text. It could turn out the traitor was a vampire who lured you all here before feeding on you, or a werewolf, or a mermaid, or a voodoo priest, or an alien, and the, the survivors will all get their own guides, they might not even know what they have to do to win, and so on and so forth. It's fascinating. The last time I played this, it turned out the house was a secret alien UFO that had been disguised. It immediately warped us all to another planet. We were all choking on toxic gas, and I shit you not, the controls were a pipe organ, which we had to play backwards, and we all had to check our little characters to see if any of us had music as a hobby. This game is insane. I don't know if I could really recommend it because it's not that fun, but I love that I own it because it's such a bizarre curio. So shut up and sit down, recommends, but only if you're like me. Well, that's not very helpful. I mean, what happens? Six this... games though, we're done. Oh, well, okay, so based on that and what you've just said about that, like, what is the best of these games? Uh, is there a best of these games? We should put together an aw the award ceremony! An award ceremony! Yeah! For the games for all of the games! Of course, there's Formula D arriving there. Oh! Looking young! There's D-Day Dice and Samurai Sword, young couple hoping to win maybe maybe both of them an award each. So many wonderful guests here, old and new. Oh yes, great to see some faces. Oh, oh it looks like some guests are enjoying themselves a bit too much. <laughs> Thank you everyone for tuning in and all of you for coming here tonight for the Board Game Awards. Shut yeah. up and sit downs first. We are so, so happy to be hosting the very first Shut Up and Sit Down Awards and uh, we can only hope that you're as happy as we are and excited as we are. So, uh, Quinns, what's this first award for? Well, we're very happy, and I have it here. The first award goes to Best Carnivorous Plants ah. in a board game. Shall I, uh, go yeah, on. please I'm do. I'm nervous. I'm, uh, very, very nervous. And what we've got here, the award goes to... Betrayal at the House on the Hill! <laughs> hey, why don't you come on up here, God. I've got to tell you, I am, I am a huge, huge fan, and uh, the rest of the night goes like this, well I'll be very, very happy, and of course you've won a cigarette! Yeah! Okay, what's next? Who's next? 
Fantastic. And coming later, we'll have a satellite interview with Rockstar, but we have to get on with the prizes. The next prize is... The next prize is best use of goblins in a board game. We have the answer right here in the envelope. Oh god, let's... you know what? This doesn't get easier, does it? Well, let's not waste any time. Let's... Oh, oh. Right, here we go. See who wins this award? Oh my god. Oh my goodness, so many people have me feel this. It's ingenious. Well, Give it well done, a ingenious. round of applause for Ingenious. Well done. Um, ingenious, come on up. Hello. It's a cash prize, as you know. Every year this is a cash prize. You've won a dollar. One American dollar with uh, the president, Ben Franklin, on. Well, well, well done. Well done. Well, d well done. Well, it wouldn't be, you know, an award ceremony without a few surprises, isn't that right? That's probably true. I think so. So, so the, third uh, prize. the third prize is, of course, for best use of the letter D right. in a board game. I think we know which game this is going to be. Famously won three times by Fury of Dracula. Okay, here we go. The letter D goes to Formula D. Well done, Formula D. Wow, that's just fantastic. That's that's coming up. More drive, drive, up. drive, drive all the way up. I, I think they're really unhappy. I think we should we should probably actually. Yeah, no, this is this is this has gone well. There's this exit over there. Wait, wait, wait there. It wasn't my fault, right? I don't, I don't get to pick. It's not up to me. I don't choose these things, right? I'm just, I'm just a figurehead. I'm just a- ah! No! I swear to God! I swear to God, don't touch me! Don't touch me! No, you. No, you. I didn't mean anything. No, look! Citadel's is falling! Citadel's is falling!